Why would you even want to own a spotlight? So like, nobody minds owning more filmmaking lights, but a spotlight? When would you even use one? Take it from me, who went from owning zero spotlights to recently one spotlight, there are so many lighting setups you wouldn't even think of doing unless you have one of these. What I have here is the Spotlight Mini Zoom from Aperture. It's actually an attachment made specifically for the LS60 lights, so the 60D and 60X, but when you use the Spotlight with these small fixtures, it really feels more like the light is the attachment. Like, this is supposed to be the light and this is supposed to be the attachment. You literally mount the Spotlight onto a stand and hang your light off of it. And when you attach your light by sliding it on and securing it with the claw on top, it's a little uncomfortable to think that this little bit of metal here is the only thing preventing your light from falling off. But it was designed this way, so I suppose it has to be strong enough. But one thing I do find slightly irritating about this mounting design is how the light can actually spin around. It doesn't affect the output in any way, but it just feels like something's kind of loose. And I'm glad I glanced at the user manual because you would need to set your light to full spot when using the spotlight attachment, otherwise you won't get a clean projection due to stray light bouncing about inside the spotlight. And despite being called the spotlight mini zoom, it's quite a large and heavy accessory. My head for scale. It weighs about four and a half kilos, but after watching Andrew from the Gaffer and Gear channel hold up a traditional zoom spot next to this mini zoom, this is indeed extremely mini among spotlights. And the zoom part of the mini zoom means you can change the beam angle simply by rotating the zoom ring. Conventionally on spotlights, you had to swap out the optics entirely if you wanted a different beam angle, so this is a huge convenience. And this knob up here is to loosen the barrel so you can move it back and forth to focus your light. I really wish this too can be operated by rotating a ring, because the focusing process is a little challenging this way, especially for fine adjustments. Now these four tabs that stick out are some of the best things about using a spotlight. These are blades for cutting your light. Think of them as barn doors, except these give you the sharpest, ultra-precise cuts. Besides using it to remove light from where you don't want it to hit, it's also super useful for shaping your spotlight projection. I find it super useful for recreating these little patches of sunlight. It looks quite realistic, and you can use it to simply add some elements to your image to make it look more interesting. You could also use this to highlight a specific part of your subject, almost like a beam of sunlight was just naturally hitting it. You also get this 18-bladed iris with the Spotlight Mini Zoom. It drops in like a filter and you can use it to really control how big of a circle you get. It's really nice that this comes included as standard because with Aperture's original Spotlight mount, this was an additional $99 accessory. That old Spotlight mount also came with just three gobos. The Spotlight Mini Zoom comes with 15 gobos. They are all m size gobos, so if you're not happy with the 15 included, it's really easy to just order additional designs from any brand as long as they are m size. But the included 15 already come with some great designs. My personal top three are the Venetian blinds, tree leaves, and industrial windows. An easy way to use them is to simply project them as a background, but you could also throw it directly onto a subject, and it really gives it so much more texture. There's a lot of room for experimentation with this, and being able to project these patterns using a gobo is certainly one of the unique advantages to owning a spotlight system. One little nitpick I do have is there's no way to rotate the gobo once it's in the slot. So if you're trying to level your projection, it can be quite tedious. Now, if it's your first time using a spotlight system, heads up, the image is inverted. So your gobos have to be upside down to be right side up, and the top cutter affects the bottom and vice versa, left is right and right is left. And one more thing, the Spotlight Mini Zoom will not actually increase the output of your light. Compare a 60D on full spot against a 60D with a spotlight set to its narrowest beam angle at the same distance, the one without the spotlight is actually brighter in the center. But with a spotlight, what you do get is a very uniform brightness within the projection circle. And one tool these spotlights go extremely well with 
are fog machines. Now seeing that beam of light coming out from the spotlight is already cool enough, but you can get some seriously incredible looking rays if you throw some gobos into the mix. It can give you some super cool lighting effects for music videos, and you can also blade the light into a thin slit and get this effect that kind of looks like a sheet of light. I find it super cool that a type of light with its origins in theatre ended up bringing so much value to photography and filmmaking. However, at $499, the Spotlight Mini Zoom is indeed more expensive than the LS60 lights it was made for. That might sound a little absurd, but it's also not your average accessory. It's a whole optical light control system. The product itself is certainly built to standards that match its price tag, and it even comes in a carrying case that looks just like the ones they ship their lights in. It's a shame you can't use more powerful lights with this, but for most indoor use cases, these 60 watt fixtures should be just bright enough to get the job done. I've got purchase links below if anyone's keen on picking up one of these, and I'll be seeing you again in one of my other videos.